Hello there, everybody. Uh, a couple nights ago, I had the pleasure of seeing the new Jay Retard documentary, uh, Better Than Something. Um, I'm a big fan of Jay Retard. Uh, I consider it uh, an honor that I got to see him twice uh, in concert. Uh, in two very different venues. Um, the first time I saw him uh, was in basically the back row uh, of a large um, theater style uh, venue. And then I saw him on his, uh, what was it, 2009, 2010 um, free uh, West Coast Record Store tour. Um, and I was about maybe 10 feet away from him uh, at Amoeba Records in Hollywood. Um, I would say that uh, both times seeing him was special. Uh, if you don't know Jay Retard, um, he's... You want to talk about a squandered talent. Um... He's a punk rocker, I guess, uh, musician, um, died early uh, of, I believe, an overdose. Um, he's from the Midwest. He, he's, he's just awesome. If you don't know Jay Retard, I mean, he, uh, I think he died at 30 or 31. He started making music. Uh, like at a constant and irrepressible and professional level uh, at the age of 14. Um, so he spent pretty much exactly half of his life uh, producing uh, cutting edge progressive punk rock music. Um, I have a lot of his work. Um, I have, I think, four, no, five of his albums, um, all with the retards or his solo work. Um, I, uh, I think it was special. Yeah, again, I, I consider it an honor that I got to see him. Um, the first time I saw him uh, was at the Wilshire. Uh, no, I've got that wrong. Uh, why can't I think of the name of it? It's all in Wilshire. Uh, Wilshire and Western. What is the name of that damn place? The Wilton? Wiltern, the Wiltern. Ah, Wilshire Western, the Wiltern. Yes, that's how I remember it. The Wiltern, and he opened for the Black Keys. Um, this may have been around maybe 2006. Um, I know that the Black Keys were on their Magic Potion tour uh, just after releasing that album. I think it was around 2006. Anywho, Jay Retard opened for the Black Keys, and I was at the back of the venue, um, and I didn't know what was going on. Uh, watching him, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even totally enjoy it because I really couldn't understand him. Um, everything was very loud. It was like a wall of sound just coming off the stage. And it was like, it was threatening. You know, it was immediate, and it seemed dangerous. Uh, and again, he was so angry. I never really had seen anything quite like that. Um, you know, I'm not too experienced in the punk scene. There were some scenes in this film from, like, underground clubs that yeah, <laughs> kind of scare a guy like me. Uh, but... I just remember, I think it's genuinely 
the only time <clears throat> I felt that music was confrontational uh, towards the audience. Um, and L.A., Los Angeles, can have, like, really s sucky crowds. You know, everyone's kind of slightly arrogant. Uh, you know, I've always felt that L.A. crowds are very mean uh, to artists. And artists have to try extra, extra, extra hard to move a Los Angeles audience. And I don't think Jay Retard gave a fuck. Um, and he just got up there and he just thrashed that guitar. He screamed. And I didn't know what the hell to think. But, I mean, I couldn't stop listening. You know, you would think that if something, you didn't understand something or something was just screaming at you the whole time, that maybe you ignore it or just talk to the person you went with or just continue to drink heavily. I couldn't really take my eyes off of him. Uh, I couldn't stop listening, um, even though I really had no idea what was going on. Uh, the second time I saw him at the, uh, the free concert, um, I was 10 feet away from him at Amoeba Music in Hollywood. Uh, he was extremely vulgar. Um, he, uh, he was having a bad time, I think. He threw unopened beer cans into the audience. Again, this is an audience of free concert goers who were just going to a music store. Um, <laughs> he, he, uh... Again, and this was like during, I think the concert started at like 6 p.m. So this is like early evening uh, and like kids were there and he's just being so unbelievably vulgar and again, dangerous that it was like, wow. Uh, and that was also a spectacle. I Really, the first time I saw him, that is what I think about, but... Uh, the second time, you know, just seeing him perform and getting to watch his face and, uh, you know, j again, just have the front row seat was was special. Uh, so, I'm going to now try and talk about the film somewhat now that I've rambled on about my love of Jay Retard. And if you do not know Jay Retard, um, do anything you can to learn his work um, with the retards or just his solo work, anything. Just listen to Jay Retard. Uh, the film is okay. It uh, started out, I saw it at uh, the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood uh, in the Steven Spielberg Theater, which is their secondary small screening room. Uh, I, this was the Los Angeles premiere. Um, it was a much smaller crowd than I expected. I really wanted a lot of people to be there. I'd say it was probably... Under 20. Under 20 people came. Uh, the directors, well, I think one of the directors and a producer uh, introduced the film. Uh, it was directed by Alex Hammond and Ian Markowitz. Um, it started out as a, uh, they are not true filmmakers. This is their first feature length film. Uh, it started out as a marketing video uh, for Matador. Uh, when his, what would be his final album, Watch Me Fall, uh, was being released. You know, they make a promotional video, whatever, give you a little glimpse of the artist behind the scenes. Uh, so this crew was just sent down to make, you know, at most a half hour uh, marketing tool, um, just this glimpse into the mind of Jay Retard. And... Uh, Sadly, while they were making it away, he passed away. Uh, so it became, you know, it just kept growing, uh, as they said. Uh, it just kept on growing, and it be eventually became a uh, eulogy for Jay Retard and, you know, a documentary uh, on his life and a chance for him to have some type of forum to... Uh, they said that all of the interview footage that they pretty much shot with him, just one-on-one -on -one interview, made it into the film. So not much of his philosophy and his uh, stories are left on the cutting room floor, which is nice. 
so again, we get to see at least for me the most straightforward uh, Jay Retard interview I've seen, uh, and also with some archival footage um, that you know has never been seen that they got from the family. Uh, so I mean, it really is kind of the definitive Jay Retard documentary. Um, it you can. I mean, you could tell that these are first-time filmmakers. It's a pretty straightforward documentary. Um, lots of talking heads, lots of people talking about Jay Retard, Jay Retard talking himself, um, archival footage. Again, it's, it's pretty much, you know, paint by number uh, in terms of filmmaking. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, at times, I don't want to say I was bored because I was always somewhat fascinated because these are people talking about a character, uh, a person that I find fascinating, and I'm honestly kind of a personal hero of mine. Um, so I was always into it, but I mean, I could tell that if you weren't interested in the subject matter, this probably would not make you interested or probably not keep you interested, perhaps. Um, you know, it wasn't, you know, get going, here's what's going on. Uh, it was just, you know, kind of repetitive, uh, a little slow. I would like to like it to have been more relevatory. Um, I would have liked to have had, you know, learned something more about his demons or you know, what led to his downfall, uh, something more uh, soulful, but it's still uh, a quality pro. I, I'll give it a seven. I'll give it a seven. I, you know, I think it was a fine portrait of a person. Um, it's, it's good usually but it's touching and it's it it gets to almost great when it uh, interviews the people in Jay Retard's family um, who I believe his real name is Jimmy Lang Jr. something like that Jimmy Jerry Lang Jr. I'm, I'm not sure uh, but they interview his father they interview his mother uh, they interview his sisters and when and it's like the climax that's at the like at the end of the film and it's very powerful at the end i mean you're you're talking to the people who loved him most and who are, who miss him the most and are left wanting by him the most so there's a lot of emotion there uh, and it's very powerful uh i you know almost wish that the entire thing could have been that powerful as the like the last say 15 minutes uh 20 minutes it's just downright kind of heartbreaking um the archival footage is amazing he gives these concerts to what appear to be no more than 10 people and the energy that he expends uh i mean he bleeds like literally he bleeds uh you know, uh, it's just amazing. You know, it's it's amazing. I, I really can't say I know anything else like him. You know, it, it uh, it's amazing to me. Uh, the music was great. There's there's a lot of uh, live performances. I can't say there's a lot of full live performances. Usually they're pretty much cut in half or something, but. Uh, Again, the assemblage of archival footage is, is quite, you know, something here. Um, you get a taste of Jay Retard, you know, from the age of like 15 to uh, up until his, his death. Um, so you really get to see him evolve as an artist. Uh, you get to see kind of how he worked. Um, again, they interview everyone he worked with. So you, you know, again, it's a portrait. Uh, and, and it's a fine portrait. Um, watching Jay Retard sit on his front porch in Memphis uh, on the front porch swing and just talk about music and life uh, was rewarding and his life's philosophies. Um, you know, he can be very funny. Uh, he can be very dark. Um, but he is always very true. 
He's always very honest. Uh, and that's probably what gave him his power, is just that he presented, I feel, great truths. Uh, I almost think this is kind of a spoiler, but really it's all I've thought about since watching the film because it's the last scene of the film. And of course, the last scene of the film is, is part of his interview. And I'm running out of time, so I'll just go ahead and wrap up with this. But uh, he said he made music because he was scared of everything else. And that's, that's all I've thought about. You know, I saw this movie like two days ago, and that line just keeps on repeating in my head. And I totally get it. You know, I totally get it. Uh, the reason I make music is because I'm scared of everything else. Um, amen, brother. Uh, so I don't really know what else to say. Um, this was really more of a personal uh, viewing for me. Um, because I love Jay Retard. Uh, so if this comes, if right now it's just on a small theater tour. Um, if it ever comes to on demand or when it comes out on DVD, uh, definitely check it out. If you've never listened to Jay Retard, listen to Jay Retard. Um, and if you find him fascinating or love his music, then this will definitely help. Uh, and I wish, I wish his story had ended differently, um, because who knows, you know, what he could have done, what he could have become. Uh, we'll never know. So, that's Jay Retard, better than something. Uh, I'll give it a seven, a solid seven, but again, this was more of a personal thing for me. Uh, and I, I loved the experience. Uh, so thank you very much.